God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you this morning. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your favor, your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you today, Lord. We bless you and praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. The Sunday school kids can go downstairs. Thank the Lord for bringing the power back on. Hallelujah. If you weren't here earlier, we were about to have a midnight mass. But well, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't know what to do with the Mass, so <laughs> praise the Lord. I did enjoy the, uh, the kind of semi-acapello and, uh, and the drums. I, I was just waiting for Cheeseburger in Paradise coming up there. <laughs> praise the Lord. Kind of this whole <laughs> Jimmy Buffett kind of feel to it. I think Jesus loves that. He loves the keys. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Am I, am I on? I don't remember if I turned it on or turned it off. I'm on? All right. Praise God. Uh, Caleb Newberry. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you being here and your friend. Thank the Lord. Amen. Caleb's uh, next uh, adventure or mission is uh, he's going out to Bethel and... Uh, Hopefully he'll be enrolled out there before long and involved in, in the good work that they're doing out in Redding, California, hallelujah, and all around the world, praise the Lord. His folks uh, have got a, another great opportunity, too, for those of you who haven't uh, got it off Facebook or anything, but they're going to the Phoenix area to uh, run a home in, uh, for Boys Town. Thank, thank you, honey. That's my wife. It's my, case, for those of you who aren't married, that's the Holy Spirit speaking. Anyway, they're going to the, they're going to the Phoenix area. Phoenix area, honey, please. And uh, the Phoenix area, Mesa. And uh, anyway, they're going down there to, to do a work for the Lord, hallelujah. But it's going to be helping young people and uh in a, in a home environment, it's going to be a good thing. Praise the Lord. So uh, pray for them. Hallelujah. Sally, would you like to stand and give a word of testimony? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Okay. Caleb, good to see you. Things haven't changed any since the last time you were here, have they? It's, it's nice to know some things are consistently the same. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1. We're going to read uh, verses 26 through 28. Thank the Lord. Amen. Uh, we had a Wednesday night we were talking about some of these things, not in the same context as uh, that I'll uh, approach it this morning, but the overall uh, truth is the same. And for those of you who were here Wednesday night, you'll You'll kind of know the direction we're going. The rest of you will just have to figure it out as we go along. Good luck. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known, all right, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So now let's, let's read this again. Even the mystery, everybody say mystery, mystery, which has been hid from the ages or from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known 
what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen? All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 1, and uh, we'll read verses 1 through 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that, that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. All right? Praise the Lord. This, this is a mystery. And it's a mystery that's been hidden. It's, it's something that has been veiled, uh, something that's covered over. Paul's talking about it. But we're getting a revelation in the book of Revelation. Paul, in Colossians, is talking about a mystery that is being unveiled. He says, even the mystery, some translations uh, give it this way, even this sacred secret, which hath been hidden from ages and from generations, and now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, in Christ Jesus. And that word perfect is mature. It means to mature. That we may present every man mature in Christ Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Now, back to Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So this, this sacred secret that Paul's talking about that has been hidden, or this apocalypsis, amen, that has been veiled over, is the mystery that God is making manifest to and in his saints now. Everybody say now, because we have a tendency to look at the book of Revelation and think it's all just about something out in the future somewhere. Yeah. Amen. That, this that's been hidden, this that's been veiled over, this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, I want to bring these together so that we understand that this is it's not a mystery for us anymore. It shouldn't be a mystery for us. We should have a revelation. We should have a revelation of Jesus Christ and understand exactly what it is that the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today and what the church is supposed to be, how relevant it's supposed to be to, in a world, amen, that has no revelation, right. that's still in darkness, that is groping, amen, and looking for light, but in all the wrong places, amen. So in Genesis 1.26, you can go there if you like, Sheila, but it's just talking about that man was created in the image of God. After God's likeness. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So this is the initial plan and, and purpose of God. God's intention from the very beginning, from, from the dawn of creation, if you will, amen, was to have a man in his very own image, amen, made after his likeness, who would have dominion over his creation. Yes. Amen. This is the work that God is completing within us this very hour. Mm -hmm. Now, praise the Lord. He, God's plan never changed. There were deviations, uh, amen, because of man and because of sin and because of all of this, the law that had to come and everything else. But God's plan has remained the same from the very beginning. Amen. And that plan is that he would have a man in his image, after his likeness, that would have dominion, that would, do, that would have... Control. In fact, in, in uh, the, the scripture says that, you know, by grace we, we receive, amen, this, uh, th that we would reign in life or have dominion 
amen, in this life. So it hasn't changed any. Paul's just repeating what the original intent of God was, uh, amen, in the new covenant. Praise the Lord. So uh, this, is, this is the work of God. It's the work that God is completing in us right now. He's forming us in his own image and his likeness through the good times, through the bad times, through the circumstances, through the situations, through all the things that we heard in testimonies this morning. That's what God is doing. He's using life itself to form us, to, to perfect us, amen, so that we can represent him, so that we can be a revelation of God, so that we would really bear his likeness and his image through all of these things, through all of these situations and circumstances that you go through in your life, through all of this process is to bring forth in every situation a manifestation of God, not just in the good time, not just when we praise the Lord, I got blessed, but in every situation, even in the negative things that happen, that we manifest God, yes. that somehow God is revealed, amen, to the world. This world needs a revelation of Jesus. Amen. It, it has to have it. It won't. It will not. Uh, will not respond. Amen. To religion, in the way that it needs to respond to God Himself. Religion never provides a real revelation. It provides information and uh, rules and regulations, but it doesn't provide any inter, uh, interaction or any intimacy with this God who wants us to be a revelation of him, who wants us to reveal him. Right. Amen. So look at, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 13 through 15. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm looking for God to do something now, yeah. right now. I'm not looking for flying beetles the size of Volkswagens off in the distant future someplace. I don't plan on hanging around if that ever happens. I plan that God has a plan to do something right here and right now, supernatural, and he wants to do it through us. Yes. Praise the Lord. So that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Now remember, he wants us to be mature, perfect, mature. Uh, so he would say, but we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, by the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Yes. Amen. Go back to verse 13 and let's, let's, let's read that as well. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. The mature man, right? Under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children. That, that shows you that the context in which he's speaking here is not perfect in the sense of no flaws, but being mature, so that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cutting craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, and look at this, in all things which is the head, even Christ. So he's saying that we no longer be children. We're no longer our children, but that we might grow up into him in all things. Amen? Now God's going to bring a people to maturity, a people through whom he can reveal his son. The book of Revelation is the apocalypsis, amen, or it is about this appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 1 and 1, that's, that's exactly what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Amen? The revelation, that's the beginning of the book. That's what it tells us. Amen? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. So the revelation of Jesus, it's the unveiling of a mystery. Yes. Yeah. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen? Now, if a book is entitled... Uh, seven ways to bake muffins. You're probably not going to find in that book ten ways to fix Volkswagens. Right? Because the title is telling you what it's about. So you don't open it up looking for auto parts if it's a cookbook, right? Well, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what we should be looking for in the book of Revelation. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. So the title tells us something about the book. It's not the revelation of John. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John. Verse, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is what? At hand. The time is at hand. Amen. It's now. We're reading it today. It's for now. It's not for future. It's not off in the distance somewhere. It was for now then. It's for now now. And if the Lord tarries, it'll be for now 100 years from now. Because God is always now. God is in the right now. God is not in the future. God is not in the past. He's everywhere, but it's always right now. When does, when, when does God want to manifest himself in his sons? Now. Now. That wasn't a trick question. Now. He wants to do it now. Amen. Praise the Lord. The answer is now. Right now. There is no question there have been, you know, there's been a lot of erroneous uh, views and teachings and, and so forth on the manifestations or manifestation of the sons of God. But there is a scriptural truth that God wants to reveal himself through his mature sons. And that's not gender specific. Everybody is a son, just like everybody's a bride. Right. Amen. Now, let's look at this uh, in Romans 8, 19. So he wants to reveal himself through mature or perfect sons. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not only does God want that manifestation... But the earnest expectation of the creature itself waits for this manifestation. Yep. All right, let's go on down to uh, 8, uh, 21 through 23. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together, until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Praise the Lord. So what we have to realize is that God isn't going to manifest us. Amen. We are going to manifest God. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I know a lot of people think that uh, becoming a son of God, you know, it means having superhuman abilities. You know, like we get born again, we walk into the phone booth and come out with the <laughs> Superman thing. But Jesus never did any miracles as a man. I kind of thought that would be the response I get. Praise the Lord. Look at John chapter 5, verse 19. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to see something in this this morning. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. All right, now let's go to John 14, verses 10 through 12. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. How are you going to do it? The same way Jesus did it, by the Father that's in them. We've, we've got these ideas that somehow people have, certain people have certain special giftings or anointings or whatever you want to call it. I understand anointing. But we all have the same anointing. Yes. It's Jesus. 
We all have the same potential power. It's a question of having a revelation of that, having a mature understanding of it so that you can rest in the finished work of Christ so that God can do what only God can do through you. Not by you, through you. Peter proves this by walking along and his shadow healing people. Peter didn't do nothing but walk down the street. The result was people were healed because of the reality of what was in him. He wasn't running around screaming and hollering and jumping on people. I'm not saying we shouldn't lay hands on the sick and all that. I'm not trying to belittle that. I'm just saying there is a place of maturity in God that I believe God is trying to reveal to his, to his body so that we can reveal it to the world so that no man gets the glory, but God does. And all people can be touched by this. All people can be empowered and, and transformed and, and changed. And nobody gets the credit but God. That's when God will move. If he has to take, you know, uh, Gideon and keep whittling and whittling and whittling with a guy who thought he was a loser to begin with, imagine what he's going to do to people who think they got it together. There's a lot of willowing and winnowing and any other adjective you can come up with that actually fits there, praise the Lord. I'm just saying... God wants to do something supernatural, but he's the supernatural one. It's the mystery of Christ in us, not us, that he's trying to reveal. And that time is at hand. Hallelujah. So here he says, this isn't just about the future. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ here and now. Now, I mean, the supernatural is a part of this, but I'm looking for a manifestation of Jesus Christ in my life today. I'm not looking for the miracle. I'm looking for Jesus. The miracle will happen automatically. I don't have to focus on 10 ways to get my miracle. I just focus on Jesus, and the result will be the same thing it was for Jesus. And greater works shall we do. All right, let's look at Hebrews chapter 3, 7 through 14. All right, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, everybody say today. Today, Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Praise the Lord. All right. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. This is the day. It's always been a today. And this is the day. It's today for us. It's today for God. And what is that day? It's the day we learn to rest. 
the day that we grow up enough to understand this is the finished work of Christ, not me. I'm not finishing the work. I'm just becoming mature enough so that that finished work can work through me. Praise the Lord. Today, in my life, right now, today, praise the Lord. See, Revelation isn't just about future events. We always look at it that way, but the problem with that is it's always pushing everything off into the future when God wants it today. He doesn't want you mature five years from now, ten years. He wants you mature today because today's the day he wants to be manifest. And he's only going to be manifest through you. He isn't going to just manifest. You know, I know that I'm not arguing about the fact that there will come a time when Jesus will reappear in the flesh, his own body. But that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about a revelation of God and appearing of God now in the body. Otherwise, he wouldn't call us the body. He's trying to be revealed. And he has to have a body to be revealed. That's why he created a body for himself in the person of Jesus the first time. Amen? Amen. A body hath he created, right? Why? Because he wanted to manifest. So he leaves a body and goes to his father so that we can do even greater works. The body. More manifestation. Greater manifestation. Praise God. All right, back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. And see, this takes the, it takes the effort out of it for us. The works are finished. They were done before the foundation of the world. We rest in it. We, we believe. We just trust in that. And they will manifest. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace. Everybody say grace. Grace Grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Grace, he says. Uh Now, grace, who's this from? This is from him which is. Uh He which was. And he which is to come. He is the ever come one, always coming. Not just some time off in the near distant whatever future. He's the continually coming Jesus. Amen. His appearing is what we should be interested in. The, The present reality of his appearing is what we should be interested in. Not he came. Not he's coming, but he is. That's what Revelation is really about. That's what he's talking to us about. A a continuous appearing, but an immediate right now appearing. A reality of that appearing right now. He's coming, praise the Lord. He is coming in us and through us, his body. He is being revealed by his appearing in us today. All right, look, let's go back to Revelation 1, verses 11 and 12. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, and unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. I, I, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Praise the Lord. All right. Verse 20. He turned to see a voice, and he says he saw candlesticks. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The believers that were in the world at that particular time, and they still are here today. I mean, the churches are still here today. They, the representation of those churches is still here today. It's the body of Christ. Amen? So he says, I turned to see this voice, a voice that was like the Son of Man. And when John turned to see the voice which was like the Son of Man, what he saw was the church. 
This is the mystery. This is what's being unveiled. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This revelation, this apocalypsis, this manifestation of his life is to be the very revelation that comes forth out of the church. And it's for now. It's not for the future. The time is at hand. It's today is the day. If you can believe, today will be the day. It comes forth out of a church that is mature, that's, that's resting in the finished work of Christ. Christ in you. So what God is saying in Revelation is important. He's saying not only what I say is important, but what's also important is where he says it and from where he says it. Where he says it and where he does it. What? This manifestation, this revelation, this revealing of this mystery. He says it and he does it out of a people. Out of his temple. Out of the tabernacle of God. Know ye not, you are the temple of the Lord. We've got people who read the book of Revelation. The only thing they get out of it is that somehow this is all about Israel rebuilding a temple. I don't know if they will or they don't. I'm not interested in that. God already has a temple. Come on. And he's moving from that temple. He's speaking from that temple. He's revealing himself from that temple. We, we, we get so hung up. You know, I mean, we go, we, we understand symbols and the signifying that John talks about and the symbols all through the Bible. Then we get to the book of Revelation. We all of, all of a sudden we think that he really is talking about bugs the size of automobiles. All of a sudden we become literal when it's been symbolic all along. Come on. They've been metaphors and then all of a sudden they become something else. This is about a revelation. It's about the mystery that Paul says is being unveiled. That mystery, he tells us the answer, is Christ in you. The hope of glory. And John is sending the same message. The revelation of Jesus Christ is now. I heard a voice. I turned and I saw the church. The voice was like that of the Son of Man. Jesus said, and greater works shall you do in my name. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's wrap it up here with Colossians chapter 1, again, verses 26 through 29. And we'll close with this. This is, this is to encourage you that this is not about a revelation of you. It's about a revelation of Jesus Christ in you. And it'll happen when we mature, when we grow up into the realization that this thing is finished. It's just a question of us believing it and walking in it. Amen? Even the mystery which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Read the book of Revelation, but read it expecting a revelation of Jesus, not the, the weirdest kind of next thing you can find to be freaked out about. The the revelation is supposed to be good. It's supposed to be good news. Not supposed to freak us out and have us hiding under beds and, you know, digging, you know, atomic shelters or something. Or storing up meals ready to eat with our AR-15 in the basement. Get the AR-15 above ground. <laughs> you may need it for that stupid neighbor you've got. But I don't think you've got to worry about, you know, killing flying Whatever. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto also I labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me 
mightily. Yes. Paul's saying, this is, here's the key. I'm trying to teach everybody about this mighty working. It's not me, but it's him working in me. That's what he's looking for in the perfect man, in the mature man. You know, it's amazing because Paul is not talking about perfect in, in his behavior because at the end of his life, he says, uh, actually, at the beginning of his life, he talks about how he did more than everybody else. At the end of his life, he says, chiefest of sinners. Amen. <laughs> he wasn't saying, I'm going to hell. He's just saying, you know, I've realized this was never about me. It's no longer I that live but Christ in me. Praise the Lord. It takes all the pressure off of us and puts it right back where it is intended to be and where the pressure can be handled. God is not freaking out about anything in our life. He's not freaking out about anything in the world or in the future of the world. He has a plan. The plan is perfect. And the plan will come to pass. It'll come to pass quicker if we grow up and stop playing these religious games and just start being who we are. Amen? Just start walking with a knowledge and awareness of who I am in Christ. Not based on my external, my outward appearance, because it's going to be flawed, it's going to screw up, it's going to do what it always does. God is not looking for perfect people. He's looking for mature people, people who will believe, people who will trust. Jesus, everybody Jesus dealt with was flawed, and they continued to be flawed in the natural, but they did mighty works by the power that was in them. Amen? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Keep looking to him, and the glory will come, but it'll go to him. Amen? Give him a hand clap this morning. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you all being out. Amen. I know a lot of graduations and all kinds of stuff going on the Memorial Weekend. Remember our veterans. Remember those who are serving right now. And uh, those who, who serve them. You know, I mean, those who are left behind to, uh, amen, to kind of keep the home fires burning and so forth. So we appreciate all those uh, men and women all around the world that are serving this country right now and have in the past. God bless them, and Lord, just keep your hand on them. Keep them safe. Bring them home to their families. Help them to enjoy the benefits of this great nation that we live in. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you.